So it's our praise and worship time. And I want everybody to lift their voices in praise. Amen? Everybody. Our first song is Come, Let's Magnify the Lord. Principalities of the dark, we 
Tonight, we will look at one of God's faithful servants in Old Testament times. God's humble servant, Hannah. And my topic is very simple. Hannah's prayer and song. Let us pray. Loving Father, I want to thank you for your many blessings that you have given unto your people. I thank you for this opportunity you have given me to present your words to your people. May your Holy Spirit take you over now. I pray and say thanks in Jesus' name. Why did Anna pray and sing? What was happening in Hannah's? What was happening to her? So let us look at the story in its context. And this story is found in the book of First and Second Samuel. There was a serious problem happening in Anna's family. Hannah husband Elkanah had two wives Anna and Penina Hannah had no children but Penina had children not only did she have children but she had all of ten boys and we know how families were looked upon in those days for having male children so here we see the situation Hannah find herself in as, she, as a child of God, it was not looking good for her. The man Elkanah, well, every year he would go out of the city to worship and to offer sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the word Shiloh means a place of peace, a place where people would gather to worship. And the two sons of Eli were there. We find that in 1 Samuel 1 verse 3. Why were these two boys mentioned in this story? Why were they mentioned in the story about Hannah and Penina and Elkanah, their husband? He had nothing to do with his family. So why were they mentioned? Let's look at it. The Bible says that Elkanah goes into God's house to offer sacrifice. And unto God. And going into God's house, Eli, two sons, they were there. And you know the story quite well about Eli, two sons. They were troublemakers in God's house. They give a lot of trouble. And here we find that when Hannah go into God's house with his family, the Bible says that while they were there, the two boys, in this story started to give I, and I believe that because of the trouble that was that were making Penina was the mastermind behind it but I have no doubt that Hannah's that Eli's two sons were part of this plot to set set Penina against Hannah although they were the sons of the priests the Bible says in Samuel one, ver, in Samuel 2 verse 12, they knew not the God. They knew nothing about God. They were sons of Baal. And listen, as I said earlier, they were sons of the priests of the temple of God. And the Bible says in Samuel 2 verse 12, they knew nothing about God. They had no intention to do the work of God. They were there in the temple to give trouble. And if you read the read this story, they give a lot of trouble in God's house. The sons of the priests. And it is sad to say that when you come into the house of God and you are having problems, the house of God is a place where you'd want to go to be comforted. The house of God is a place where you'd want to, to go for somebody to talk to, somebody to console you. But here was Hannah going into God's house, knowing that every time I come into this house, I was provoked. Right? I was provoked, I was angry, everything was going against me in God's house. So here we have to note that not everybody in God's house have their focus on Almighty God. Satan will put people in God's house to distract you, to take your minds off the things of God. And this was what was happening to Anna here. The two sons of the priests were placed there. There were a distraction to the things of God. 
but Hannah maintained her cool. It was not easy. And just as today we are in God's house, it's not easy because some, some of our members are there to distract us. Some of our members are there to put us in, in all sorts of problems in the house of God. And I want to note, brethren, that wherever you go, whether you are in God's house, in your workplace, in your homes, it is not going to be easy sailing once you are a child of God. What do you say? No, the Bible says that in Samuel, 1 Samuel 4, 1 verse 4, he said that when Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters portions. But to Hannah, he gave a worthy portion for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Verse 5, the adversary provoked her to make her worried because of her, of her condition. Verse 6, every year she was provoked in the house of the Lord by Penina and Eli's sons. Helkena questioned Anna. But let's look at, look at what happened here. In verse 8 of 1 Samuel 1, Then Elkanah said unto her husband, Then Elkanah her, then Elkanah her husband said to her, Why weepest thou? Why eatest thou not? Why is thy grief? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? What Elkanah was saying here, what I understand from this, Elkanah was saying to Anna, Why are you weeping? Why are you not eating? I gave you more than what I give Penina and all her children. So here, Elkanah was saying to Anna, you have no need to be grieving because I have given you more. And I can tell you this, my friends, that earthly possessions will not and cannot comfort you because when you stick to earthly possessions, it's, you can lose them at any time. Look what is happening in the world today. Look what is happening. A lot of people have lost their jobs. A lot of people have lost their houses. A lot of people will lose their earthly position because of COVID-19. Earthly position cannot and will not comfort you. Anna's prayer and vow. The Bible says that Anna rose up after they had eaten and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat Upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto God and wept. Now here, the important thing I want to bring up here. All that was happening to Anna, it was not pleasant. But one thing I want to note, Hannah had a connection with Almighty God. She did not waver. She did not, did not lose her faith in God. So all that was happening around her, she decided that, look, I am going to take my petition unto God and, to see, and see what will happen. And she vow a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look at the affection of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto me thy handmaid, a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Now, here was Hannah making a petition to God. She was saying to God, Look, God, if you give to me what I ask for you in this prayer, a man child, I in turn will give him back to you all the days of his life. Right? It is important, and it came to pass. As she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Here again, the priest, the man of God, marked Hannah's mouth. And the Bible goes on in verse 30 to say, Anna, no, Anna, she spoke in her heart. Her lips moved, but the voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. No, here was the man of God accusing this godly lady of being drunk, right? 
having wine. Right? No, the Bible says that she spoke her mouth moved, but her voice could not be heard. No, only, my Bible tells me that only God can read your mind. Right? So here Eli was judging her because he never understood what was happening. But Hannah here was pouring out her heart to God. And it is sad to say that the man of God who should be comforting this lady was now casting doubt in this lady's mind. Right? Here, Hannah now was pouring out her heart before God. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy, thy wine from thee. And honored and answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine unmade for a daughter of Baal. Now, remember the story I said earlier, that the sons of Eli, they, they have no interest in God. If you look at verse 2 Samuel 2 and verse 12, Now the sons of Eli, they were sons of Baal, they knew not the Lord. And I was saying here to the priest, I am not a daughter of Baal. So don't, don't judge me. You don't know what I'm talking about. I was here pouring out my heart to God. Why are you judging me? Telling me that I was drunk. Right? She had this condition for so long. And I, I know for sure that Eli must have known of what was happening to Anna. Did, she, did he do anything about it? No. But here, when the lady decided to talk to God, he wanted to interrupt. He wanted to judge her now. Count not thine unmade of a daughter of Baal, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken either. No, she was saying, out of the abundance of my heart, I ask God for a gift. And I believe that God is going to come true for me. So don't cast any doubts upon me. My God, who I trust, my God, who I believe in, will come true for me. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of is may the God of Israel grant thee thy petition, and as thou asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was more was no more sad. Here now, after praying to Almighty God, remember the story says she was sad all along, but after praying to God, and having no doubt, because she knows the connection she has with God, knowing no doubt that God is going to come true for her. The Bible says, she now can eat. Her countenance was no more sad. She was pleased with herself, knowing that God has answered her prayer. It was a, a, a mark of faith. The Bible says, in, in verse 19, and they rose up early, in the morning and worship before the Lord and return and came to their house and Elkanah knew his wife Hannah and the Lord remember her so here is it now Hannah prayed to God and God kept his side now of the bargain I remember what Hannah prayed for and I am going to grant her this request right the Bible says that God remember. It is important to note that when we ask God for something, and God, God always keep his side of the bargain, it is important that we keep our side, that we will keep our side of the bargain unto God. So when we ask God for something and God give it to us, if we ask God for a, a prize position, if we ask God for a job or for a promotion, and when God give it to us, whatever we pledge in our heart, when we ask, we must remember when, when it, was, it is given to us to remember that it is not ours, it is God's. Wherefore, it came to pass, when the time come, for, come about after Hannah had conceived and bear the son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked of him. And the word, the Samuel name of a meaning she asks of god and god she god deliver he said 
Samuel comes straight from Almighty God. And the man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord here the sacrifice. This is very interesting. But Anna went up not. For she said unto her husband, I will not go until the child is weaned. Because she remembered the promise that she made to God. That I am not going back to the temple unless I am going to take the child. Because when I took this, take this child to the temple, I will not take him back. I am going to leave him there. Because I made a promise to God that I am going to leave this child into God's house. To serve in the house of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 24, And when she had weaned him, she took him with her. And she took bullocks to offer sacrifice unto God. And said, and, and she slew the bullock and brought the child to Eli and said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee praying unto the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked him. Now Eli was getting the full understanding of the prayer. Remember I said earlier that she, start, she was accusing Anna. No, Anna revealed what she was praying to, to Eli. I was praying and asking God for this child, and God deliver. God has come true for me. I am going to stand up to my responsibility. I'm going to stand up to my promise that I made to God. I am going to give this child to the Lord. Therefore, as I have said, have I lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, he shall, he shall be lent to God and he worship the Lord there. So Hannah said, I make a promise. I am going to give this child to God. All the days of his life, he will be in God's temple. And you know, something struck me when I was reading this, you know. Anna knew of what Eli's sons were doing in the temple. And she wanted a child, knowing the connection she had with God. She wanted a child to represent God in the temple. She wanted somebody with moral strength. Somebody with an upright spirit. Somebody who will stand up for righteousness to represent God in the temple. That's why she, she prayed for this child. And she was so happy to, to give this child to the priest to serve in the house of God. Now, here is the, 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 uh, the topic of my story. The second prayer. And I will look at Hannah's prayer and song. Hannah prayed and sing. Anna prayed and said, My heart is rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Here now, remember when I, what I said earlier about what was happening to Anna. All her enemies, they, they, they tried to mock her. They, 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 they mock her. She was so grieved. But no, she said, Her mouth is now enlarged. She can boast on her enemies. She can boast about her God. We cannot boast about God if we, if we don't have a connection with him. So Hannah knew the connection he had with God. He knew what God has done for her. She knew what God has done for her. So she now can boast about the goodness of God. When God has done something good for us, we need to go and let the world know what God has done for us. We need to boast and to show off about our God. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like unto our God. So here Hannah was saying, look man, there is none like our God. Our God, and he was speaking now in the temple, and he was speaking to all those who were in the temple, that this God that we serve is, is our God. We need to honor our God. We need to exalt our God. He is our God. We need to big him up. So Hannah was saying now, there is none like unto our God. My God is the rock of our rocks. My God is the solid, true foundation of this world. No matter what is happening in this world, God is the rock of ages. 
No matter what is happening. No matter how much of us we put our trust in God. If we put our trust in Almighty God, we know that God will deliver us. We are in a crisis. The world is in a crisis. And if we put our trust on our houses, on our position, on our cars, on our jobs, they will fail us. Many of us are going to lose our jobs. Many of us are going to lose our prize position. But one thing I can tell you, we can rest assured, if we put our trust in Almighty God, He will never, ever fail us. We can trust in Almighty God. The Bible says that I believe that Hannah, after going through this prayer, was singing this song, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All around her was sinking, but she know that when she put our faith, our faith and trust in Almighty God, the rock of rocks will stand up for her. God will never fail his people as long as we put our trust and our hope in him. Thank you very much. Loving Father, I want to thank you for your words. I thank you for the God you are. I thank you, O oh God, that you have placed in our hearts your word so that if we can depend upon your words and knowing that if we trust in you that you will deliver us out of all that is happening around us help us oh god to understand who you are knowing that you are in control of everything that is happening continue to be with us continue to bless us and continue to help us to trust in you we pray and say thanks in jesus name And feel like God was somehow forgotten That you are faced with circumstances you can't get through Right now it seems there's no way out You're going under God's proven time and time again He'll take care of you And He'll do it again He'll do it again Oh, just take a look at where you are now And where you've been always come through for you he's the same now is a bad you may not know how you may not know when but he'll do it again. God knows the things you're going through and how you been broken in two. He's the God of the sun, the stars, the sea. He is your father. He'll calm the storm and he'll find a way to fix Still 
my friends since we have started uploading our presentations here at the Seventh-day Adventist Church Kings West Jamaica Conference Mount Salem St. James we have had a lot of individuals who have been contacting us people who used to be members of the church and want to renew their commitment if you are outside of the reach of our territory you can find the nearest Seventh-day Adventist Church to you if you're a backslider and you want to return if you have been convicted and convinced and want further Bible studies, you can notice on the screen you will see the specs being run. You can um, contact me um, at my name, Charles Brevitt at yahoo.com. That's Charles Brevitt at yahoo.com as one word. Or you can call us at 298, that's 876 876 298 0000. We will put you in touch with our Bible instructor, or elder, or I myself will reach out to you. You can leave a message on our Facebook page. That also will be accessed and we will respond to you in short order. If you want to support what we are doing, remembering now that our church is out of uh, commission, we are just reaching out uh, through this medium. If you want to contribute to what we are doing here to keep the lights on, you can also contact us through the medium that is running on the screen and we will communicate to you how best this can be done. For our members who want to contribute to the, the, the care packages that we are doing, please contact us, you know how. And if you are not a member and you want to contact us to contribute to the less fortunate so that they can have food on their table, just follow the instructions on the, the, um, the screen and you will be able to contact us. We would do well with your support. Uh, pray for us. Continue to lift us up and intercede for us. That the Lord will help us. That even while we preach to others, we ourselves will not be cast away. If you're a member of the West Jamaica Conference, we need your help. We ask you to contact us if you can help. We are trying to do our best in these times of uh, tight fiscal management. And uh, we look forward to your financial support to your prayers and intercessions, and to your words of encouragement uploaded to our pages. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Um, and we hope that if we never meet again on this side of heaven, that we will see each other in kingdom come. God bless you. Thank you.